Imagine with me here for a second. You're 11 years old, walking just up the street to your bus stop, and then the shock. 18 years of your life go by, gone just like that. I'm here today to tell you about J.C. Lee Dugard. J.C. was kidnapped for 18 years. I'll tell you about her life before the kidnapping, during the kidnapping, and her life after. J.C. was born on May 3, 1980 in South Lake Tahoe, California. She lived with her mother, Terry, her stepfather, Carl, and her younger sister, Shana. She adored her younger sister, younger sister in the fact that someone looked up to her, but her stepfather, on the other hand, she only felt like he was trying to send her away. Only a month after her 11th birthday, on June 10th, she was walking to school. There were two weeks left of school until summer vacation, and she had some big plans. Her stepfather, Carl, was working outside in the garage on his van, so when she left, she made sure to yell at him to make sure he knew she was leaving. As she was walking just up the hill, a strange van pulled up next to her. The driver of the van rolled down the window and asked her for directions. Before she could even think, he pulled out a taser and shot her with it. She was paralyzed. <coughs> she tried to scoot back into the bushes towards safety, but before she knew it, she was being dragged and lifted into the floorboards of his car, when then covered by a blanket. Because of the pressure of the blanket and the nausea from the moving car, she lost consciousness. She didn't wake back up again until she heard doors slamming and the blanket was pulled off of her, telling her the man was telling her to go inside. Imagine being this innocent 11-year-old girl sitting in a house with people you've never seen, no idea how far away from home you are, people telling you and they're laughing in your face saying they never thought they would get away with this. The strange man took JC into the bathroom and turned on the shower. I'll spare you the details, but what happened within that first hour under his control was just the beginning. JC was kept in a secret backyard. The backyard consisted of two sheds and a couple tents that was hidden by a tall wooden fence and a lot of foliage. The first shed she was kept in was basically just a shell. There was nothing in it besides a bucket, and she was kept in there in the dark, handcuffed for the first majority of her kidnapping. The next shed she was then introduced to and later kept in what had a couple more pieces of furniture in it, like a small TV and a pull-out couch. On random days, her kidnapper would come in and exercise, as he would call it, for hours on end. When JC was 14, she had her first baby. She didn't know anything about birth or pregnancy, I mean, she was only 14 and wasn't living with her mom. She barely knew her body at all. She was, her kidnapper gave her a VCR tape that was quite old about childbirth that she tried her best to pay attention to and understand. Again, at 17, she had her second child by herself. She was given very little strange medication and no medical attention at all. After her kids were born, though, she was given a little more freedom. She was able to go and stay in the tents to give her a little more space and some time away from the kids. And even she was able to go inside the house. Her kidnapper later told her that she would have to refer to her daughters as sisters because of the kidnapper's wife was not able to have kids. So they were the kids that she could never have. She was even able to go, her and her kids were even able to go inside the house on the days when her kidnapper's probation officer would visit but still no one noticed her. They even went on family outings to places such as the pumpkin patch or the grocery store, and she always hoped someone would recognize her, but no one ever did. One day when the probation officer came to visit, he noticed something that called for concern. He brought the whole family into the police station. He brought JC into a separate room away from her daughters and her kidnappers and questioned her. She was very apprehensive at first, but she finally gave in. After 18 years, JC was finally away to walk, able to walk away from her sentence, but Philip and Nancy Garrido were just beginning theirs. Philip Garrido, the man that had taken care of her, was sentenced to 431 years in prison for the sexual 
abuse, and kidnapping of J.C. Dugard performed by him and his wife. His wife, Nancy, was sentenced to 36 years to life in prison. Even though J.C. had finally had her life back and her family back, she had missed the prime time of her life. She had to learn how to drive at 29 years old and catch up on all the education she missed while still trying to get her daughters the education and medical attention they lacked. After her release, she turned to caring for and riding horses as a part of her therapy to help her come to terms with what happened. She realized that she had to acknowledge everything that had happened to her, and it was a part of her, and she couldn't run from it. She wrote her first memoir called A Stolen Life, and then went on later to write a second one. She also started the JC Foundation. The JC Foundation deals with girls that have kidnapped, sexual abuse, and other trauma and the first responders and law enforcement officers that deal with those cases. After long nights and multiple reviews of the probation visit videos, the state probation office revamped its program and refunded JC, uh, gave JC a $20 million Ref I don't know what the word is. JC is now living her best life, and I think there was a lot to learn from her and how she continued to go grow. Her life before the kidnapping was very simple. During was hard, but after she became even stronger. Thank you for listening to me, and stay safe out there.